Throughout human history in times of war, peace, celebration, and mourning, one thing has remained constant, music. But how is it that something as simple as sound has the power to unite, inspire, and even heal entire nations? How did music survive through centuries of conflict, destruction, and chaos, only to emerge stronger, more vibrant, and more essential than ever? The Role of Religion, Sacred Music, and Spirituality Religion has been the greatest patron of music. In nearly every faith, music has played a central role in worship and devotion. In Christianity, the Gregorian chant, ethereal and otherworldly, became a key element of the liturgy. Named after Pope Gregory I, these chants were sung in unison by monks, their pure tones believed to be the voice of the divine itself. The development of polyphony in the Catholic Church's music during the Middle Ages paved the way for harmony. These intricate choral works weren't just sound, they were sonic prayers built to resonate in the soaring arches of Europe's grand cathedrals, designed to amplify the sacred and lift the soul toward heaven. Across the world, music took on spiritual dimensions in other ways. In Islamic cultures, the adhan, the call to prayer, served as both a daily reminder of faith and an art form of profound beauty. Meanwhile, in India, ragas became spiritual exercises used in temples to invoke specific deities. In Tibetan Buddhism, chanting in the deep resonance of the singing bowls brought practitioners into a state of meditation, aligning their inner vibrations with the outer universe. That was an amazing look into how religion shaped music. But we're just getting started. Up next, we dive into how wars and revolutions transformed music forever. If you're enjoying this journey, let us know in the comments and hit that like button to keep exploring with us. On to the next chapter. On to the next. Following the darkness of the medieval period, the Renaissance was a rebirth of art, culture, and music. Music blossomed in new ways, more complex, more expressive. Composers like Josquin de Prez and Giovanni Palestrina brought counterpoint to new heights, creating a tapestry of sound that reflected the intricacies of human thought and emotion. Secular music began to rival sacred, as madrigals and courtly dances entertained the nobility. The invention of the printing press allowed for the widespread dissemination of music, changing the way it was composed, performed, and taught. The Renaissance also marked the beginning of global musical exchange. As European explorers traveled to Africa, Asia, and the Americas, they encountered new rhythms, scales, and instruments. This cross-cultural contact began to influence Western music in ways that would lay the groundwork for future genres like jazz and blues. The Baroque period, spanning from the late 16th to the early 18th century, was defined by grandeur and emotion. Music became more dramatic, more ornate, and more expressive. Composers like Johann Sebastian Bach and Antonio Vivaldi pushed the boundaries of musical complexity, weaving intricate patterns and melodies into their compositions. The opera became a dominant form during this period, with composers like Claudio Monteverdi introducing the world to new forms of storytelling through music. Audiences were moved not just by the lyrics, but by the music itself, which conveyed the raw emotions of love, loss, and triumph. This period also saw the invention of new instruments and the refinement of old ones. The harpsichord became a symbol of Baroque music, while violins took center stage in the works of Vivaldi's The Four Seasons. For the first time, instrumental music rivaled vocal music in popularity and sophistication. As the Enlightenment unfolded, music, like philosophy and science, became a reflection of reason and order. The classical era, embodied by composers like Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart and Joseph Haydn, was all about balance, clarity, and structure. The symphony, concerto, and sonata became standardized forms during this time. Mozart's music, though filled with wit and lightness, carried a deep emotional core, and Beethoven, who bridged the classical and romantic periods, took this structure and imbued it with raw, untamed emotion, creating works like his Ninth Symphony which became an anthem of humanism and unity. If the classical period was about order, the romantic period was about passion. Composers like Frederick Chopin, 
Franz Liszt, and Richard Wagner broke free from rigid structures to express the deepest emotions of the human soul. Chopin's intimate piano pieces spoke of longing and melancholy, while Wagner's operas, with their massive scale and mythological themes, enveloped audiences in a sea of sound. This era embraced nature, the supernatural, and the sublime, reflecting the growing complexities of a rapidly changing world. The Romantic period also saw a resurgence of nationalism in music. Composers like Edvard Grieg in Norway and Bedzik Smetana in Bohemia began incorporating local folk melodies into their works, giving a distinct voice to their nation's cultures. The influence of war, music in times of conflict. War has been a crucible for music, transforming it, twisting it, and sometimes creating entirely new forms. In the trenches of World War I, soldiers sang folk songs to keep their spirits high. Meanwhile, the 20th century's two world wars reshaped music like never before. World War I saw the rise of patriotic music, songs like Keep the Home Fires Burning and Over There, but it also left a scar on the classical music world. Composers like Maurice Ravel and Igor Stravinsky were deeply affected by the devastation, their music taking on darker, more experimental tones. World War II saw a surge in the popularity of swing and jazz, which provided an escape from the grim realities of war. In occupied Europe, jazz became a form of resistance against the Nazi regime, which had deemed it degenerate. Artists like Django Reinhardt played with a defiance that symbolized freedom in the face of oppression. Jazz and swing were also deeply tied to the American war effort, with Glenn Miller's In the Mood becoming a symbol of wartime unity. Think about this for a second. How does music, of all things, not just survive, but thrive in the middle of war, chaos, and destruction? In the darkest moments of human history, music still rises. Why? Maybe it's because music is more than just sound. It's hope, strength, and connection. It's something no weapon can touch. No war can silence. And for those of you still watching, you get it. You understand the power music holds. Thank you for coming on this journey with us because together, we've just scratched the surface of the magic behind it all.